Welcome to this WiseAL DAX for Power BI tutorial. In this part of the series, we're going to look at how to calculate running total or two date values. So we'll start by looking at how to calculate the first and last dates of different intervals and use those dates in the dates between function to modify the filter context of the measures you write. Then we'll look at how you can use the start of year and end of year functions to calculate pretty much exactly what they say they calculate, before we look at a couple of more convenient DAX functions for working with the year to date figures. So we'll look at the dates YTD function to get all the dates from the start of the year up to the end of the current interval, and then the total YTD function to do a similar thing but in a much easier syntax. At the end of the video, we'll have a quick look at how you can modify the end date of a year for the measures you create using some of the other functions we've already used in the video. So plenty to do in this one, let's get started. To get started, I've created a new report and I've already imported some data about movies from an Excel workbook. As usual, I'll drop a link in the video description so you can download this file yourself and follow along with the video if you'd like to. This workbook is a cut down version of the full movies file that we tend to use for this tutorial series. It's only got movies ranging from 2010 to 2016. I've also made sure that before I imported the data, I've enabled the automatic date time feature in Power BI Desktop, just as we did in the previous two videos in this section of the tutorial. So this guarantees that when we import date data, like the release date column from the movies table, we get an automatic hidden date calendar table created for us in the background. So you can see if I expand the release date field, it's got a built-in date hierarchy with access to year, quarter, month, and day already. To get started, we're gonna use that release date date hierarchy to build a matrix, which shows the sum of runtime minutes for years, quarters, and months. So we'll start by building a measure to show the sum of runtime. So I'm gonna right click on the all measures table that I've imported, choose new measure, and then I'll just zoom in quickly on the formula bar so we can see what's, what's going on. And I'm gonna call this one sum run time. And we'll make this one equal to the result of the sum function referring to the movie's runtime field. Once I've created that measure, we can delete the delete me column. So let's right click and do delete from model, and then just confirm that we want to do that. And then we can insert a basic matrix into the report. We can assign the release date field to that. And that's gonna insert all four levels of the hierarchy. I don't want the day level in there. So let's just get rid of that by clicking across there. I'll just collapse the filters panel. And then I'm gonna add the sum of runtime field to the same matrix. So I can check the box next to that as well. I'll just increase the size of the matrix on the page. And then I'm also gonna increase the font size of the values in that matrix using the formatting pane. So let's head to the value section and bump up the font size to about 13. And then I'll just drill down in the matrix so we can see that the, we see the year level, the quarter level, and the monthly level. So we can see the total runtime for each different interval. Now I'd like to create a new measure which calculates the running total for the sum of runtime measure. So I want the value of this column to accumulate as we go down the list, so that ultimately the value for December 2016 is the same as the grand total for the entire matrix. Now to get that to work, we're going to need to modify the filter context applied to each interval that we've displayed in this matrix. We know a bit about filter context by now, so just as a quick reminder, if we were looking at a particular value here for March 2010, we know that the values included in that measure is everything ranging from the 1st of March 2010 to the 31st of March 2010. So this implicit filter context limits the rows involved in this expression. We want to modify the filter context so that the interval or the range of dates included still ends on the last date of the current interval, but begins on the first date of all the dates in the entire data model. So just to demonstrate how do you get the first and last dates, first of all, I'm gonna create a measure called last date of, of interval. So let's add a new measure. We'll call this last date of interval and then we'll make this one equal to the result of the last date function. And all we need to do here is refer to the date column in the automatic date table that was created for us. So I need to refer to the release date field and then refer to the date column in that hidden date table. I can close around brackets and hit enter. And then if I add that measure to my matrix, we can see unsurprisingly, I hope, that we get the last date of each interval according to the filter context. To do the same thing for the first date is a little trickier if I just copy the measure we've just created there 
and then paste this into a new measure. And I'm going to call this one first date of not of the entire not of the interval, but of the entire model. There is a first date function, as you probably remember from previous videos in this section of the tutorial. But if I just said first date of the date field, that would be automatically filtered based on the filter context. So I'd get the first day of March, the first day of February, first day of January, etc. So I'm going to add inside the first date function, the all function to effectively remove any filters applied by the context. So that will return all of the dates from the date column of that date table. And if I hit enter there and then add that measure to my matrix, you should see that the date for every single row in that matrix now shows exactly the same value, the 1st of Jan 2010, which is of course the first date of the date column in our date table. So now that we've calculated the dates we need, we can use those to modify the filter context for our next measure. So let's add a new measure to the all measures table. I'm going to call this one sum runtime running total. And then we're going to use the calculate function to modify the filter context applied to the evaluation of the measure. So let's say equals calculate. The expression we're going to calculate is the original sum of runtime measure, but we're going to modify the filter context by using the dates between function. You may well remember this from the last couple of videos in the series. So we're going to refer to the release date field and the date column of that table. And then we're going to refer the start date to our first date of model measure, and then the last date to the last date of interval measure. We can then close a couple of sets of round brackets and then enter that measure, add it to the matrix. We don't really need to see the start date and end date or first and last date measures in there. Just let's tidy this up a little bit. And we'll hopefully see that this value now accumulates as we work further through the table. So as I scroll downwards, the value gets bigger and bigger. And eventually the last date or the last month we show has the same value as the grand total for the entire matrix. Now let's say we want to reset this running total when we reach the beginning of a new year. So the value for January in the two columns would be the same and the value for December would be the same as the grand total for the entire year. To do that, we'll need to be able to calculate the start date of each year. Unfortunately, DAX has a function for that called start of year. So let's just add a brand new measure so we can show this value displayed in a separate column. Let's call this one first date of year. And then we can make this one equal to start of year. You'll notice there is a couple of associated functions there, start of month and start of quarter. So if you were trying to accumulate for smaller intervals of time, you can use those functions to get the, the date you're interested in. But for this example, we'll go with start of year. And then we need to reference our dates column again. So that's going to be movies release date dot date. Close the round brackets and hit enter. And if I drop this measure into the table, we should see that in 2016, the result is the 1st of January 2016. In 2015, it's the 1st of Jan 2015, etc, etc. So having done that, we can use this new date in a new measure. Let's copy the sum of runtime running total. And then we can paste this into a new measure. And we'll call this one sum runtime year to date or running total for year. I think year to date summarizes it quite nicely. So let's go with year to date. And then rather than using the first date of model, we can simply reference our first date of year measure instead. So the syntax is identical. We're just referencing a different start date. We can then update that measure and then we can drop this one into the matrix. Let's get rid of the first date of year measure just to tidy things up a bit. And we can hopefully see that when we reach the end of the, the each year, the running total resets at the start of the next year and accumulates so that the total for December is the same as the total for the year. Next, I'd like to show the year to date value as a percentage of the total for the year. So each of these intervals needs to be able to reference the sum of runtime from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. 
and fortunately DAX provides us with a function to calculate the last date of the year. It's called end of year. So the quickest, easiest way to show this is to copy the first date of year measure and then paste that into a new measure and then change its name to say last date of year and then change the function we're using from start of year to end of year. So just to quickly show that if I add this to the matrix, that will provide us with the last date of each year and changing as we reach each new year. And then to use that in another measure, we could copy and paste the sum runtime year to date into another new measure. And we'll call this one sum runtime year total or something along those lines. And then simply change the measure we're referencing here from last date of interval to last date of year. If we then update that measure and add that one into the matrix, we'll get rid of the last date of year measure just to tidy things up a little bit. We can see the total for each year displayed next to every interval of that year. The final step would then be to divide this figure by this one. So let's add another new measure. I'm going to call this one sum runtime year to date percentage of year total. Yeah, the measure name is going to be longer than the measure itself, I think. I'm going to use the divide function to refer to the sum runtime year to date and divide that by sum runtime year total. OK, so we can close the round brackets there and then we'll just format this one as a percentage. And then we can add this measure into the matrix. We'll get rid of the sum runtime year total, I think, just so we can see the percentages increasing until we reach 100% in the last month of each year. Just so that we can see an example of working with a different interval other than just using years all the time, let's create a new measure that resets the running total at the beginning of each quarter. So I'm going to start by copying the sum runtime year to date measure. Let's grab all the code from there. And then we can create another new measure, paste this one in, and we'll call this one sum runtime quarter to date or QTR for short. So the end date of the dates between function we're using is still the last date of the interval. The start date needs to be the first date of the quarter. Now I haven't created a separate measure for that yet. So let's just nest this function inside. Let's go for start of quarter. So we need to refer to the release date date column again. And that will, of course, as the name suggests, calculate the first date of the quarter interval. So if I update that measure and then I can drop this one into the matrix, we should see that the value accumulates up to the end of the quarter. So you get the last date of the quarter is the same as the total for the quarter and then it resets at the beginning of the next quarter. Then we could take the result of that and divide it by the total for the quarter. So to get that we need a measure or at least a, an expression within the existing measure that calculates the sum of runtime for the quarter total. Let's just quickly copy and paste the sum of runtime year total measure and then we could create a new measure, paste all that code in and then again, change the word year to the word quarter. If I could spell that, QTR, there we go. And then I want to calculate the result from the first date of the quarter to the last date of the quarter. So again, I'm going to replace the references to these two measures with start of quarter, release date, date. And then as you may be able to guess, end of quarter, release date, date. So that's the final measure expression. I can then update that just to show what this displays. If I drop that one into the matrix temporarily, we should be able to see that for each quarter, you're seeing the grand total for that quarter. And then the rem remaining thing to do is divide these two values using the divide function. So let's just quickly, I'm going to copy and paste if I can find its name quickly. There we go. I'm going to copy paste this measure, sum runtime year to date percentage of year total. Let's copy that one into a new measure. And then I'm going to call this one sum runtime QTR to date percentage of QTR total. 
And again, I've misspelled it, apologies, there we go. And then some runtime QTR to date by some runtime QTR total. Okay, having done that, we can update the measure. Let's apply percentage formatting to it. So it looks a little bit more readable. And then in the matrix, we can get rid of the total for the quarter and replace that with our percentage of the total. So a bit of effort, but probably worthwhile just demonstrating you don't always have to work in the same intervals of time. Changing the intervals is relatively straightforward and DAX tends to have built-in functions for working with the standard intervals of years, quarters and months. So far, we've spent a reasonable amount of effort in calculating the first and last dates of the intervals we're interested in so that we can pass those into the dates between function. But when it comes to standard intervals such as year to date, quarter to date and month to date, DAX has some functions that make our life even easier than it's been so far. Just to demonstrate this, I'm going to tidy up this matrix. I'm going to get rid of everything except for the sum of runtime and the sum of runtime year to date. So let's get rid of the running total there and then everything below some runtime year to date. So I basically want to recalculate this just using a much easier function. So we're going to get rid of dates between and use a single function to get the date range from the start of the year to the end of the current interval. So I'm going to copy and paste the sum runtime year to date measure again. Why reinvent the wheel after all? Let's create a new measure. I can't think of a very inventive name for this one, so I'm going to call it sum runtime year to date two. But the beautiful thing here is that I can get rid of the entire dates between function and replace this with a function that returns the range of dates up to the current interval end from the start of the year. It's called dates year to date or YTD. And you may have noticed there that there's a function equivalent for month to date and quarter to date. But for this example, we'll stick with the year to date. So I'm going to reference the movie's release date dot date field again, close the round brackets, and that's the entire measure. So incredibly simple, as you can see. So I'll update that measure, and then I'll add this one into the table or the matrix. So we can see that for each individual interval, we get the same end result using a much simpler syntax. So the two measures we've created there generate the same result for the individual intervals of month, quarter and year. But you may notice that the grand total at the end of the table is slightly different. For the original sum runtime year to date that we calculated, we get the grand total of everything in the table. Whereas for the new one that we've just produced, we only get the total for the last year in the model. This is due to a subtle difference in the way the two functions we've used generate the first date of the period. So previously, with our original sum runtime year to date, we were using the first date of year measure, and that used the start of year function. So this will calculate the first date of the first year involved in the filter context. So for the total row there, the first year is 2010. So the start of year is the 1st of Jan 2010. The dates year to date function does something slightly different. So in this sum runtime year to date two, dates year to date calculates the first date of the uh, last year involved in the filter context technically doesn't actually calculate the first date at all. It just incorporates all of the dates involved in the last date of the current filter context. So the last date involved in that total row is 2016. So we're effectively using all dates in 2016. Now, if you really wanted to, you'd have to be a bit mad to do it, I think. But if you really wanted to, you could rewrite the dates year to date function to show it what's going on in the background. I'm just going to copy this measure and paste it into a brand new one. I'm going to call this one some runtime year to date three because I'm inventive like that. And then I'm going to replace the dates year to date function with what's actually happening in the background. So I'm going to nest the filter function. You may remember this from previous videos in the uh, in section five of this series, modifying the filter context. Then I'm going to use the all function to return all the dates from the release date date column. And then I'm going to apply two filters to it. So I'm going to use the AND function to join two filters together. And first of all, I'm going to check that the release date date is less than or equal to the maximum release date date for the filter context. 
just not got quite enough space to display that. Let's just zoom out a little bit. OK, and then I'm also going to check that the year of the release date is equal to the maximum year or the year of the maximum release date. So year movies release date date equals year. And then inside here, nest the max function again and then refer to the release date date. I might need to zoom out again just to make this even vaguely readable. There we go. OK, so I need to close a set of round brackets for the AND function and a set of round brackets for the filter function. And then if I enter that, providing I've not made any mistakes, I can add this one into the matrix and get the same result as with the dates year to date. So this bit is the key here, the way this filter works. It's calculating the year of the latest date in that filter context. So it's always going to be the uh, from the start of the last year to the end of the last year in the total row. I said you'd have to be mad to do this sort of thing. If you have access to the dates year to date function, why on earth would you do this? Well, there are situations in which the dates year to date function won't work. I can think of one example being when you have a direct query to a SQL Server database. So if you've not imported your data, you're using a direct query, then many of the time intelligence functions won't work. So this sort of thing does still have its place. But I think for our examples, that's a little bit of overkill. So I'm just going to remove that from the matrix and move on and show yet another way to get the same end result. Let's see one more way to get this same result, the sum of runtime year to date. But this is by far the easiest way to do it using another built in DAX function. It doesn't even require using the calculate function to modify the filter context at all. So let's add a new measure from scratch. Again, I think the longest part of this is going to be typing in the name of the measure. So sum of runtime year to date. And then we'll call this number four equals. And then there is a function called total YTD. Notice there's also one for quarter to date and month to date as usual. This one total YTD. So this one basically allows you to apply an expression. So in this case, it's going to be the sum of runtime one more time. And then you can specify the range of dates used. So again, the range of dates is the release date date field. So no messing around with filter context, no calculate function, no dates between or calculating a range of dates. Just give me the total year to date for this particular expression using the date column of our hidden date table as the continuous range of dates. And once again, if I update that measure and then we can add this one to the matrix, the end result is identical once again. A common feature of the functions we've used for calculating the year to date figures in this video is the ability to specify what date your year ends on. By default, it assumes that the end of the year is the 31st of December. But if, for example, we wanted our running total to reset in April of each year, we could specify that our year ends on the 31st of March instead. Just to demonstrate that, first of all, using the original sum of runtime year to date, where we were using the start of year function. I'm going to copy the sum runtime year to date measure. I'm going to place that into a new measure. And then I'll call this one sum runtime year to date April, indicating that the year starts in April. Uh, if you can think of a better name, please feel free. The last date of interval is the correct end date for our date range. But the first date of year isn't going to use the start date of the year we're going to use start of year, referring to the release date date field. But then we can specify a value for this second optional parameter. You can tell that it's optional because it's listed in square brackets there. If I type in a comma, I can insert as a string the date that the year ends on. Now, depending on your regional settings, you can do this in a variety of ways. The documentation suggests using a double digit number for the month and then a forward slash and a double digit number for the day. So 0331. Um, because my regional settings are in the UK, I could also get away with 31 forward slash 03. Uh, so do it, get the, the sensible correct way, of course. Um, or if you wanted to make this uh, a little less ambiguous, you could say things like 31 ma or ma 31. So as long as it can be interpreted as a date, then you can um, pretty much get away with it. I'm going to go with the recommended option here, though. I'm going to um, sort of submit to uh, to 
month, day, unnatural though it feels. And then I'm going to close the round brackets at the end of that. And then I can update the measure and I can insert this one into my matrix and see this time that the accumulation resets in April of each year. So it carries on adding up to the end of March and then restarts in April. We can do the same thing with the dates ytd function. So if I find my sum runtime year to date two, I'm going to copy that measure and then paste that into another new measure. And guess what? We'll call this one the sum runtime year to date April two. And then just like we did with the previous function, the start of year function, the dates ytd function has a second optional parameter to specify the year end date. So again, I'm going to in type into some double quotes here, 0, 03 forward slash 31 and update that measure. Add it into my matrix just to show the same end result accumulating throughout the year, but then resetting in April to reset the running total. As you may have guessed, you can also do the same thing with the total YTD function. So just to demonstrate that, let's find the sum runtime year to date for measure. And once again, we're going to copy this one into another new measure and we'll call this one sum runtime year to date, April three. Okay. So the awkward thing I find about this function is how you specify the end date parameter. If I type in a comma at the end of the movie's release date dot date, in the tooltip here, hopefully you can see there are two compulsory parameters. We've already specified the expression and the dates. Having typed in a comma, I've moved myself onto the filter parameter. So this is the first of two optional ones. Year end date is the one I actually want to get to. And the filter parameter lets you add filters, as you might expect. So similar to the sorts of things you might put in a calculate function. Uh, so I don't know, maybe you want to find where the, uh, where the genre equals action, so that sort of thing. Or maybe you want to find out where the, uh, the Oscar wins is one or more, so you could accumulate the total runtime for only Oscar winning films, for example. That's what a filter would look like. If I type in another comma now, you'll see that the filter parameter um, moves on to the year end date parameter, so that one gets highlighted in bold. And then I could specify uh, 03 forward slash 31 uh, and then close the double quotes. So that would work. But I don't really want to specify that third parameter, the, the filter parameter. I want to get rid of that one. Now, how do you do this? In some Microsoft products, when you want to skip an optional parameter, so for example, in Visual Basic VBA, you just type in multiple commas to skip to the parameter you want. So typing in the comma here to skip over the filter parameter and get to the uh, get to the year end date parameter, just to show that in the way the tooltip highlights it. If I type in a comma to get to filter and then another comma to get to year end date and then go 0, 03 forward slash 31. So there is the year end date specified with that date. But sadly, that syntax doesn't work in DAX. If I try to enter that measure, I get a syntax error. So the slightly strange way you do this is you type in a single comma, which the tooltip indicates as you being on the filter parameter, but then you just fill in the year end date anyway. So 0, 03 forward slash 31. So it looks as though I've entered the year end date in the filter parameter, but it's interpreted as the year end date when the measure is calculated. So there we go. I'm not a big fan of that. I think it's a little bit ambiguous. Um, I would prefer it if you could perhaps name the parameters. So you would say in front of each parameter, you'd put expression equals some runtime dates equals movies release date date, and then year end date equals 0331. But I don't know of a way in DAX to name parameters or name the arguments you pass to the parameters. Anyway, all that aside, sorry, that was laboring the point a little bit. Um, if you update that measure and then you add that one into your matrix, you should find that once again, you get the same end results, just using perhaps a, the easiest syntax possible. So there you go. There's a range of different ways of calculating year to date or running total figures. Hope you found some of that useful and interesting. Thanks very much for watching as always, and we'll see you next time.